Nick News started by accident. Uh, we had, Lucky Duck had gotten going by this time, and we had produced a couple of documentaries for PBS and one for TBS and a couple of other things. And then uh, Gulf War I started. And Geraldine Laybourne, uh, one of the founders of Nickelodeon, called me and she said, this is the first time this country's been at war since we've had 24-hour news. And she said, I don't think kids can escape it. And I think they're getting a lot of misinformation. We have no news on Nickelodeon, but I know that you have a production company and I like your work. And would you put together a show that explains, tries to explain this war to kids, and, and more to the point, lowers the anxiety of American kids? And I said, well, I don't know, let me think about it. And that night I was channel surfing and I came across, with all due respect to my former colleague and a man I admire greatly, Peter Jennings. And he was doing a show for kids on this subject. And there was Peter and he had on a suit, coat and tie, and he was standing up in the middle of the room and the kids were sitting down on the floor below him, way beneath him. And Peter had a gas mask in his hand. And he said, Timmy, this is a gas mask. Would you like me to show you how to put this on? And I called Jerry Laybourne and I said, I think we'll give it a go. Uh, because two things were wrong there. One, you're not going to calm Timmy's fears by showing him how to put on a gas mask. And two, why are you way up there and they're down there? So we opened our show and we're sitting on the floor, sitting on a sofa, sort of all crowded around on this. And I had a, 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 a beach ball that was a globe of the world. And I started out by saying, this is Baghdad. And I asked one of the kids to spin it till we found the US. And I said, this is, you know, the US. Now here's the deal. Saddam Hussein does not have a bomb that can reach from there to here. And he doesn't have an airplane that can reach from there to here without stopping to refuel. And every country in between has said that they will not allow his planes to stop to refuel. Therefore, you can go to sleep tonight knowing you're safe. Now, let's talk about this war and what's going on. And that was the beginning of Nick News. No, we started with our common sense and the fact that we were journalists. Uh, and that we knew what good journalism was. And we weren't going to... We started with the rules that we weren't going to lie to kids. And we weren't, we weren't going to make up, you know, say, there, there, nothing bad happened. Don't you worry about it, honey. Because I would go back to that time when I was 10, 10 years old and terrified of the Soviet Union dropping the hydrogen bomb on me and the fact that nobody addressed my fears or gave me a way to talk about it. And I would think about, I wasn't a fool at age 10. I could see on television, I could see these bombs being tested. I knew this stuff. Why was I being treated as if ignorance was bliss? Ignorance is not bliss. If you, you know, there are people today who think Nick News should never be on the air because they say, why can't we just let children have their childhoods in blissful ignorance? Well, you know what? It would be a fine world if we could, but we can't. Certainly not with the computers today. Kids are hooked in, they're hooked up, they know. They know. So if you pretend it doesn't exist, I don't think, I don't, you know what? I think it's a lie to think that was ever that way. Because if you look, if you go back, okay, I grew up in the Cold War and I was terrified of the hydrogen bomb, the atom bomb. Well, certainly kids during World War II knew what was going on. Certainly kids during the Great Depression knew what was going on. World War I before that, and before that, most kids, unless you were wealthy, went to work at about age 12. So I don't want to hear about the blissful ignorance of childhood. It would be really nice. And yes, I do believe there is a cutoff point. I mean, I don't think you sit down with a three-year-old. You know, sit down with a three-year-old and you say, there, there, nothing bad's ever going to happen to you. Got you covered. This is never going to happen to you. That's not the answer you give a 10-year-old when a 10-year-old asks you a question. Because that 10-year-old will just look at you and go, you're lying to me. I know better. So then you try to give them an answer that makes sense to them. You know, I know, I know that could be, that can come in with its own problems. For example, when President Clinton was impeached and uh, he 
know, we knew we had to do a show about that. And I thought, how, how are we going to deal with the sex aspect of this show? How are we going to deal with this? And I thought, okay, the word inappropriate in our culture with kids today has come to mean, we say to young kids, you have a right not to be touched in an inappropriate place. You have a right not to be touched in an inappropriate way. It's become almost code. So we were able to go on the air and say the president had an inappropriate relationship with a woman to whom he was not married and when questioned about it in court, lied under oath. Is it ever okay for a president to lie? And that was how the discussion started. Well, of course, it is okay sometimes for a president to lie. You know, uh, I go back to those Canadians that were hidden in the Canadian embassy in Tehran. Well, not only did the president know about that, we all knew about it. Every major news organization in the world knew those seven Canadians, knew those seven Americans were hiding in the Canadian embassy. We all lied about it to protect their lives. That's okay. There are times like that. There are fewer than presidents would have you think, fewer times that it's okay to lie, but there are some times. So then we get to, is it okay to your lie in your house? What happens if you lie? What, what do you think ought to happen to the president? Blah, 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 blah. We were off the sex and on to the, the issues fairly rapidly. There's not a, there's not a subject we ha wouldn't cover. There are subjects we haven't covered for one reason or another, usually because they have not become uh, abortion, for example. If that became the biggest issue in a presidential campaign, we'd cover it. Just haven't covered it yet. Haven't had a reason to. Uh, but there's, there's, so we said we wouldn't lie to kids. Uh, we said that we would always try to point out that there were more good people in the world than bad. Uh, and that we would always respect their intelligence. That we would not talk down to them. And I think if there's one thing that Nick News is most known for, it's for respecting the intelligence of young people. And that makes me kind of happy. In a way, that goes back to overnight. 